Let's talk about the difference between average and instantaneous. In particular, let's talk about average versus instantaneous speed. The difference is when you see the word instantaneous, that means at a particular moment, at a particular instant. So we'll say a particular moment. Whereas the average is over some period of time. So again, average speed. So if S is speed, when you put a little bar over that, that's how we say it's average. We'll say that is the total distance divided by the total time. So the average speed might be calculated over a few minutes, could be over an hour, but it is more than just a couple seconds. Whereas instantaneous is sort of at a particular moment. When you think of instantaneous, I want you to think of a radar gun. And when you think of average, I want you to think of somebody with a stopwatch on the side of the road. So let's make an example on, uh, say, a throughway, some road that has mile markers. Let's say for argument's sake that you get on at mile marker 362. But you realize as soon as you get on, you really have to go to the bathroom. And you want to get to mile marker 262, 100 miles away. But you just don't think you can make it. So you drive and you drive and you drive and you're driving probably a little too fast. And you get off halfway in between. So let's say you get off at mile marker 312. And we'll say when you got on, it was 8 a.m. And when you got off here, it was 8.40 a.m. And you had already gone 50 miles. So if we wanted to calculate the average speed for that distance, you could just use average speed equals total distance over the time. The distance you would use there would be 50 miles. And the time would be 40 minutes or two-thirds of an hour. So we'll say 0 0.66 hours. And when you do that, you would find that given your biological necessity, you had been pressing the gas pedal fast enough to average 75 miles an hour. Unfortunately for you, right as you got off at this exit, there was a police car. And this police car had a radar gun. I put flags in my cars. There's no logical reason for that. I just do. And they have their radar gun and they pointed it right at you. Did that radar gun say 75 miles an hour? Well, if that was an average speed gun, it would have said 70 miles an hour. But actually, when you were near the end, when you could see victory, when you could see the exit sign, you were going 82 miles an hour. Which also means at some point here in the beginning, you may have only been going 70 miles an hour, which is still above the posted speed limit of 65. So it takes you a while. You uh, get a ticket. You finally do go to the bathroom. And by the time you get back on the road here, it is now... 920 and you haven't learned your lesson so you continue until you get to this point here at 10 a.m. after having averaged 75 miles an hour for that stretch again so what if what if we wanted to know your average speed not just for the 50 mile section what if we wanted to know for the whole trip including your escapade with your police officer and whatever lines you may have waited in the bathroom in order to do that for the entire trip what you would need to know is you would know the entire distance. So that would be 100 miles. And now including your stop and your drive to the first exit and your drive from the first exit to the second exit, that's a total time of two hours. So even though you think of yourself as having driven very fast and your instantaneous speed at any moment had been as high as 82 miles an hour, your average speed in reality is just 100 miles divided by 2 hours. That's only 50 miles per hour. So again, when you see a police officer with a radar gun, I want you to think 
of this being instantaneous speed. And when you think of average speed, I want you to think of somebody, for example, with a stopwatch. It's possible for, and I, I don't believe, I've looked on the internet, Snopes.com and other place, I don't believe they've ever actually given tickets for this, but it's certainly technologically possible with the easy pass system or the ticket you have to look at the exit you got on, the exit you got off, know that distance, divide by the time it took, and give you a ticket for speeding. But I, I don't know that they do that. But I also don't want you to think the only way you can get a ticket is with a radar gun. Hardly the case at all. Sometimes you'll see signs where you might see speed limit enforced by aircraft. That sounds rather dramatic, rather military. But usually what's going on is if you look carefully on the lines, if you look on the road, you'll, you'll, you'll often see lines. And these lines can be pretty far apart, half mile, third of a mile, something like that. Useless to somebody that's on the ground, but if you're in an airplane, you can see both of these lines. And with a stopwatch, you can time how long it takes a car to go from here to here. So if this was half of a mile, and you're supposed to transit that at, say, 60 miles an hour in 30 seconds, but you transit it in 22 seconds, well, you can divide and see you, you were speeding pretty heavily. And I've seen situations where there were five cars pulled over at the same time by five different police officers, and there's an airplane going up and down the highway. And the speed they were quoting wasn't instantaneous speed. There was no radar gun involved. It was just the average speed. And, of course, if they get you at an average speed of, say, 75 miles an hour, chances are you may have been going that 82 miles an hour at some point. So instantaneous speed is the speed at a particular moment, like this. And average speed is just your total distance over total time. It's the average over whatever period you decide. I just want to put a disclaimer out there. In, in case it sounds like I'm advocating speeding, I'm not. It makes for interesting physics problems, but it's not a great safety thing to do on the road. So please don't speed, and certainly don't speed because I said do.